this short lecture, I'm going to discuss different loss functions used for regression. The general structure of loss function is as follows. We have a loss function, which is a function of the true value and the predicted value. Two common types of loss functions used in regression is the mean square error and the mean absolute error. Before we dive deep into types of losses, I would like to briefly discuss what is meant by a norm of a vector. Consider a series of vector of terms uh, x1, x2 up to xn. The norm of this particular element x with uh, the base p is nothing but uh, the sum of individual terms raised to the power p, the whole root of uh, p. Now, uh, p can take different values. p here is an integer and uh, three common values of p is 1, 2 and infinity. So for p equal to 1, the norm of x, uh, also known as the L1 norm, is uh, the sum of the absolute values of these uh, elements in this series. It is also commonly known as Manhattan norm. So if you uh, sum this up and take the two endpoints, it's nothing but a stepwise function and it's uh, possibly all types of uh, steps that uh, you can go from point A to point B and it's also called the Manhattan taxi and uh, norm and but the common uh, term uh, used is the L1 norm and uh, for p equal to 2 uh, the norm of this vector is nothing but uh, the sum of uh, the squared values uh, and the whole uh, term is under a square root and uh, it's also uh, called as Euclidean norm uh, because it actually measures the distance. So consider uh, uh, two vectors like uh, once you take the difference between the let's say x is the difference between uh, uh, two vectors and you need to calculate uh, the distance between these two vectors. So once you calculate the difference and you calculate L2 norm you actually have the Euclidean norm distance so it's also called as the euclidean norm uh, the infinity norm the value of p is too large so once you kind of take the summation and uh, take the value uh, root of p so what you get uh, back is the absolute value of the highest term of x mean absolute error so this particular uh, loss function is actually nothing but uh, the L1 norm of the difference between uh, y1 and the uh, uh, predicted value of y and uh, we take the average of it. So let's say this is a, a plot. So this uh, particular line is the predicted line and the red uh, circles are the true values the error is nothing but the difference between the uh, actual value and the predicted value now to calculate the mean absolute error so we take the uh, norm of this which is nothing but uh, the summation of uh, all these individual errors the absolute sum and uh, to find the mean we just average it out by uh, dividing by the number of terms mean square error we as the title suggests it is uh, sum of the square of individual error terms so y minus y hat is the individual uh, error term of the ith example and uh, to take the mean we uh, divide by the n uh, the number of uh, items in this particular series and if you look into it, it is nothing but the square of the L2 norm rather than the L2 norm itself. The L2 norm, it's uh, the square root of this particular term. Uh, taking the square actually has a lot of advantages uh, in calculating the derivatives. For instance, uh, let's calculate the ith uh, derivative of this particular term. And let's assume that y is a function of uh, weights, y hat, uh, weights w. So when you calculate the differential, so the differential of this particular 
term ith term comes out uh, neat as uh, uh, y minus uh, y hat into the partial derivative of y hat uh, with respect to w so this is uh, y hat and uh, uh, this is a differential but uh, if you take uh, the square root differential of the square root it becomes uh, really cumbersome and uh, mean square error is also nothing but uh, the variance and the square of bias so this particular uh, term and representation you can find it in uh, commonly in statistical inferences so, and uh, here the mean square error is nothing but a uh, average of the difference sum of the errors and bias is nothing but uh, the difference between the average predicted value and the actual value and uh, variance can also be expressed in this particular form so when you do uh, the math it all adds up to uh, mean square error being the sum of variance and the square of bias now ma versus msc let us consider two scenarios. Let's say our data set contains a lot of outliers. In this case, uh, mean absolute error is better, mainly because uh, mean square error uh, will be much higher than the mean absolute error in case of outliers. And this will likely misguide the optimization algorithm to fit the outlier data more and the accuracy of the predicted values will be much lesser so hence uh, the absolute error is preferable here but in general we always like to attain a global minima and a mean square error almost uh, guarantees a global minima if one exists uh, especially in the convex uh, cases uh, uh, chiefly because uh, since it's a square error it uh, takes some sort of parabolic shape and it is easier to find uh, the gradient here the global minima or the minima out here and uh, in this case uh, mean square error is much useful